Welcome to this Saturday travel and history tip. And today we will be talking about the little free libraries that we have noticed are popping up across the country. And every time we see one, we place one of my travel and history tip books, often on the beaten path, the unclassic road trip. The little free library is a trademark term. It was started in February of 2012 and was registered on October 29th, 2013. And I believe that we started seeing them right after that. The first one that we saw was actually in Arizona. As we were driving in the tranquil San Rafael Valley, 25 miles east of Nogales, to see the ghost town of Loquil, we saw a couple of interesting stops. One was where the well-worn Fray Marcos de Niza historical monument has been erected, a one-room schoolhouse, and, as I mentioned, the little free library. As a viceroy of Mexico, this priest had entered Arizona on April 12th, 1539, making Fray Marcos de Nisa the first European west of the Rockies, which this is fabulous. These little free libraries are set up almost always the same. Their policy is to take a book and return a book. We've never taken a book, but we always donate one, as mentioned. And in this case, we donated an often on the beaten path, the unclassic road trip, Eastern Edition. After we dropped off the book, we proceeded one mile to the San Rafael State Natural Area to view the 9,000 square foot territorial style ranch house. It's a national historic district, understandably referred to as the Big House. Many movies, including Oklahoma, were filmed on the Green Ranch. Even if you cannot enter the ranch house site because it is not usually open to the public, the drive along the international border into the sweeping valley is breathtaking. And we were just touring around in this region, and that's when we came across this, our very first little free library. We find them in other places, and it's always kind of fun. And one of the most recent ones we found was actually in Alabama. It says, This side of paradise, the world's only Scott and Zelda Fitzgerald museum. They belong to the world. F. Scott and Zelda Fitzgerald. He inspired America with his writing, notably The Great Gatsby. She inspired the world with her zeal for life. The Fitzgerald Museum tells their story. Zelda Fitzgerald, who was born and raised in Montgomery and later lived here with her husband, F. Scott, while he wrote Tender in the Night during the winter of 1931 to 19. The house, south of downtown at 919 Felder Avenue, has been converted into apartments, one of which is a small museum. This museum details their lives and works through videos and memorabilia, press clippings, first editions, photographs, and more. And in front of the sign was an Alabama Historical Commission sign that said F. Scott Fitzgerald, his wife Zelda, and daughter Scotty lived in this house from October 1931 to April 1932. So they didn't live there very long. I found it kind of special to put one of my books in the little free library on F. Scott Fitzgerald, the famous author's museum property. Across the street was a little park that was dedicated to F. Scott and Zelda Sire Fitzgerald, and they also had these little concrete blocks with some sayings of Zelda's. She refused to be bored, chiefly because she wasn't boring. It is the loose ends with which men hang themselves. I'm so full of confetti, I could give birth to paper dolls. Sounds like she was quite the character. I don't know anything about her, but I learned a little bit about her in this quick stop while we were in Montgomery. Now leaving Alabama and heading to Montana, we went to the Last Chance Gulch. The city of Helena started as a group of placer minor cabins and Main Street follows the bottom of the Last Chance Gulch. The gulch is formed by the convergence of the Orofino and Grizzly Gulches and its colorful history began when gold was discovered July 14, 1864 by a party returning to Alder Gulch from an unsuccessful prospecting trip. They agreed to camp and give this locality a try as their last last chance. It proved to be a bonanza. It is estimated that the gulch produced 30 millions in pay dirt and there is plenty left beneath the present business district. After a cloudburst, colors and nuggets have been found in the gutters. Main Street is very irregular in width and alignment. Some opine that it was laid out in this manner to restrict the shooting range of impetuous, hot-blooded gents in the roaring days gone by. And I write about Last Chance Gulch, Helena, in my Often on the Beaten Path, Unclassic Road Trip Central Edition, which includes Montana as a Rocky Mountain state. And here are some pictures of Reader's Alley, like the 
sign says, Where the Spirit of Montana's Heritage Lives. And as we walked up Reader's Alley, the historic section of Helena, specifically which tells the tale of the mining in this region, we found another little library and, of course, placed a book. And then, actually, the most recent one we found is not far from our little cabin in New Hampshire. It's just on the side of the road. And, of course, we popped in, often on the beaten path, the Unclassic Road Trip and Eastern Edition. This library was quite full. I am in no way endorsing any of the political or social ideas of the little free library organization. I just think that they're cute and we have seen them when we're out traveling and I think it's a great place to put a book and if you want to put one of my books there I would appreciate that and not only put one of my books in one of the little libraries as you come across one or donate one to your local library and if you say that you're going to do that and if you order all three I'll send you an extra Eastern edition to be able to donate it to one of the little free libraries or to your local library. According to the Little Free Library's website, they say that more than 30 million adults cannot read or write above a third grade level. Books in the hands of children have a meaningful impact on improving literacy. The more books in or near the home, the more likely a child will learn and love to read. And that is true. And I do encourage you to have your children read. This has become like a lost art. Everybody just wants to look it up online and find their information that way or get ebooks. But I don't think there's anything better than sitting back with an actual book in your lap. And in conclusion, there are more than 100,000 registered little free library book sharing boxes in 108 countries worldwide. So there's bound to be one near you. And as I mentioned, we have seen dozens of them around the country and always try to leave one of my books. I hope you've enjoyed this different Saturday travel and history tip. American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it. Don't let them steal our treasured American history. Thank you.